Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to PaizoCon 2022, uh, and specifically the Building Worlds and Starfinder panel. Uh, my name is Leo Glass. I'm the managing editor at Paizo, and I'll also be your uh, moderator uh, for the panel today. Uh, I'm here with three of my esteemed colleagues who I'd like to introduce themselves uh, as well. Uh, Jenny Jarzabski, uh, Andrew White, and Joe Passini. Uh, Jenny, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Sure. Hi, uh, I'm Jenny Jarzabski. I am one of the creative developers who works on Starfinder. Specifically, I used to work on organized play with Starfinder Society, actually, but I am currently in charge of, well, not in charge of, but I work with Jason Keeley um, on adventure modules as well as adventure paths. Um, also other like Starfinder adventure content and, of course, helping build worlds with my friends in the Star Chamber. Awesome. Uh, Joe? How about you tell us a little bit about yourself? All right, I'm Joe Piscini. I'm the Starfinder lead designer, and I work on the hardcovers generally with John Compton, and also got to make the Deck of Many Worlds, which we're going to look at today uh, with folks. So that uh, covers my <laughs> credits for this, relevant to this session of ours, which I'm excited about. Awesome, awesome. And last but not least, Andrew, would you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Andrew White. I'm a front-end engineering lead on Paizo.com, but uh, please uh, don't hold that against me too much um, <laughs> because I also sometimes get to write stuff. <laughs> so um, I guess that's why I'm here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you all. Thanks for joining me today. Um, a little bit about myself quick. Uh, I said I'm the managing editor uh, at Paizo, but I've also written for uh, Starfinder and Pathfinder. Uh, one of my more recent contributions is I got to write volume two, uh, uh, Merchants of the Void of the Fly Free or Die Adventure Path. So um, I love uh, I love world building for Starfinder and I think it's a fantastic universe. I'm really excited today uh, to talk to you all out there uh, about building worlds. But before we, we get into that, we kind of wanted to just as a panel talk a little bit more generally. Uh, and, you know, the vast uh, in Starfinder is a big place. And one of the first things you have to do as a GM or a writer, Andrew, as you mentioned, or, or, or Joe as a designer, uh, or Jenny as a developer, you have to go, okay, how, what are we going to put in this big black space that we have out there? Um, and so you have to start with building worlds or world building, which we'll talk about because there are some, some differences there. Uh, and they're kind of two different concepts. But when sort of filling in that the, the vast, so to speak. Uh, what do you all, where do you start? How do you think about, so, okay, this is how I want to build a planet or, or build a place that uh, my players can go to. So I, I tend to start with a, sort of a minimum viable product, if you will, like think about what purpose does this need to serve? Is this somewhere, because, you know, in a Starfinder, we assume that PCs generally have a starship and can kind of go anywhere. There's lots of campaigns and even our own published adventure paths that subvert that a little bit. But if you're doing mm -hmm. homebrew or if you're even in a lot of our published adventure paths, you'll end up on a starship with the ability to go literally anywhere. So the first thing I think of is, you know, are, are is this just a place that PCs are going to stop over to refuel and grab some supplies, get some equipment and level up or something? Uh, are they are they going there for to have a specific adventure, you know, to solve some problem or or find somebody or or you know get a MacGuffin or is this or is this world going to be the center of an entire campaign like are they not going to have a starship are they going to or is their starship going to crash on this world or you know for some reason are they going to be locked into this world for a long time and that that can inform how much kind of effort you put in because we all know the players will will uh and rightly so invent a lot of cool new things uh and take your plans and go like this and then throw them that way. <laughs> uh, and, and that's a good thing. That's, you know, it's a collaborative nature of these games that we love. So uh, sure. definitely, you know, and, and getting collaboration from your players is another great way to get investment from everybody and have everybody's ideas represented and, and have everyone have a good time rather than you sort of going into a tank and inventing everything yourself and then coming out and saying like, look at what I've made. And, and you know, that can work out um, certainly, but, uh, again, invest for reasons of investment and, and collaboration. I think it's a lot more fun to do this stuff together, which is what we're going to do today. What do you think, Jenny, Andrew? Do you have anything to add to that or well, where you start I, I know from? That, I know that in a lot of cases, I will start with like a theme generally like I'm going for. Um, and by theme, I mean sort of a, a collection of 
tropes that I'm sort of building a planet around because that's a good starting ground for designing something from the ground up. Um, so I'll start with, okay, I want this to be the, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know the, 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 uh, the, the, the crime ridden slum planet or something. So I'll take <laughs> that and I'll, uh, I'll think, okay, you know, what, uh, what, what tropes from this genre do I want to include in this planet? And then what, uh, what biomes, what, uh, species, what political intrigue can I use to justify these tropes that I already set up? Um, so I generally start, I guess, working in reverse that way. I'll start with what I want the, the, the world to be like and then mm -hmm. assign justification for it after the fact. I see. Gotcha. And, and you know, you're talking more kind of as the writer perspective. Joe was talking, you know, from a collaborative perspective that GMs can use at the table. How do you feel that negotiation happens? Like, how, like since you both kind of talked about, you know, um, there's sort of an internal negotiation, what Andrew was talking about, right? Of how do I pick and align the tropes with the political justification, so to speak, and how do I make that make sense, but also sort of make it serve the story, if you will, if you'll let me take that liberty. Uh, and then uh, uh, Joe's talking more about, about negotiating that between GM and players alike. So how does that negotiation go? How, how do people, how should, what's the best way for, you know, people to world build together, or is there even a right way? <laughs> I mean, I personally oh. think it's highly context dependent, right? Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, when we're talking about something as large as a planet, a lot of the time, mm -hmm. all the all, all you really need to start with is an extremely rough blueprint, um, which can be sort of a collection of tropes. I want this. I want an ocean. I want. Uh, I want it to be heavily volcanic. I want there to be a bunch of warring crime syndicates, and I want uh, sky whales. Let's put that in there. And um, once you've got all out. those things out there established, then you can say, OK, well, to, to all the individual people that you're going to be building the world with and for, you can have them build on that, come up with something that they like, uh, something that grabs them about that concept and let them build out something else. So let them say, OK, I, I am a, I am a refugee or I am a current employee of one of the crime syndicates, which I will now. Uh, describe in greater detail, or I am uh, the, the sky whales that we talked about before. Apparently, they're a thing that you can ride, and I'm from somebody who lives in a city that's built on the back of one of them, and then just sort of rip from there. <laughs> that's rad. I like that. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's awesome. I think that speaks to kind of what we're sort of planning to do today is, mm -hmm. is instead of coming in with uh, ideas that we want to see in our world, which is totally a legit thing and something you might want to do if you're running a campaign, right? And you already have a sky whale theme or a character who's into, who's really good at writing sky whales. Well, you, if you're going to go to a new planet, there probably should be sky whales there so they can do their cool thing that they're good at. Um, but uh, if, you know, I think going completely random and justifying things from those random seeds that you get uh, is a way that I like to do things uh, in a lot of cases because it sort of mimics the exploration. Uh, you, you get to explore, you know, how does this actually make sense? And hopefully we'll see that today with some of our random choices. Like what, how could these possibly work together and, and coming up with how <laughs> they do is, is kind of the fun. And, and also it, again, I think it mimics the feeling of going to a new world and saying like, what is going on here? Like, and learning mm -hmm. together, I think that is a fun way to do it. But I think the, the other way of having having things that you know you want and then dashing some randomness into that, I think that's another perfectly valid and really fun way to build worlds. So I guess what we're saying is there's <laughs> there's a million ways to do it. There's as many ways to build worlds as there are worlds. So mm -hmm. One of the stories that I was relaying uh, to everybody here in one of the planning meetings was I had a great experience a while ago playing, uh, I don't even remember what the game was, but it was a board game that I was playing with a bunch of people who I normally played RPGs with. And it was a resource gathering game where, you know, you you have a city and you, you, you corner the market on some sort of imports and exports, and you've got something you're good at, like industry or warfare or something. And the game itself was not particularly memorable, but all of the like random justifications that we came up with for why the city that was importing tons of wood was suddenly like a huge military superpower because obviously they're they're building puppet soldiers and they're they're going out and they're invading the the nearby, <laughs> the nearby kingdoms with do. their wooden army um, right 
And yeah, that's, that was pretty much exactly what Joe was talking about, where it's like, what the hell is implied <laughs> by this weird thing that I just randomly came up with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's just really interesting too. like, we'll do a little shameless product placement here too. But as we talk a little bit about uh, uh, those tools and kind of that there, you know, there is no right or wrong way in a lot of ways. And we have a lot of tools that can help you. One of the ones we'll use today is the, the deck of many worlds, the Starfinder deck of many worlds. Uh, and we're also going to use the Starfinder Galaxy Exploration Manual, which I also have uh, right here. Um, I use these a lot in my own uh, campaign. Um, Jenny, I see you nodding. I don't, I don't know if you do as well, uh, uh, these types of resources, but um, I think they're fantastic. And like Joe said, you can really use them in, in kind of a cool modular way to just uh, start with uh, you know, I, I like to start with an emotion or something I want the players to feel a lot of times, even with the planet. And then I've got all these cool cards that I can use to help flesh it out. Uh, but I might just start with, I want them to feel uh, uncomfortable when they get there. I want them to feel intrigued. Uh, and so then if I, you know, I pick a card uh, and it gives me really cool, uh, you know, little plot hooks, which we'll discuss today as, as we kind of pick randomly from our own deck, uh, I can just build them into, okay, exploration is my main theme and here's how I'm going to connect them. Or sometimes I could just say, I don't need a theme. I'm going to let the cards do the work. They have, they have interesting hooks and things on them uh, and use that. So there's, you know, there's lots of ways to do it. Cool. Okay. Well, then let's get to it a little bit. Uh, we're going to actually build some worlds with you all. We want to show you, you know, show, don't tell, right? The right or way. Uh, we want to make sure that we show you uh, how to build some worlds and build worlds with you. Uh, so that's what we hope to do. So please, if you're at home, uh, be ready to participate, uh, you know, chat a little bit with us. We'll take some suggestions. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the cards uh, as, as we use uh, the deck of many worlds. Uh, and we'll talk, we'll walk uh, folks through uh, the galaxy exploration manual bits we're going to use too. So Joe, do you want to take us away and we'll start, we'll start building the world. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, the deck of many worlds is a way to throw about six or seven cards together and get a random world that has, you know, physical attributes, cultural attributes, uh, species that live there and have societies, species that live there and eat the people who live in societies, um, all kinds of stuff. And, and also adventure hooks and ideas for weird things that might be happening. So you get all of that from just a few cards. Um, today, we're going to use just the first card of that, which will give us the sort of physical characteristics of the world and one uh, brief adventure hook. And then we'll use another card just for its adventure hook. Um, and then otherwise, we'll use the Galaxy Exploration Manuals process, which is very similar, um, but just you use dice instead and uh, the rest of the hardcover to flesh things out uh, a little bit more. So if, Leo, you want to grab our first card here and see what kind of world, and I think we've pulled this card before the stream, unless you've, you've gone rogue, which is totally legit in building worlds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I thought I about it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we, I know we've said that we so can build worlds possible. on the fly. I want to test you, my That's friend. That's right. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, so this, this, yeah. So what do you got? Well, well, we could do that. I think I think I'll stick to the script. Uh, we did draw. We did pick. Still, we did do a randomly selected one. But to make sure we could uh, we could serve you well, we did talk a little bit about it. Um, it is a terrestrial world, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, its gravity is standard. It has an atmosphere of normal, and its biomes are airborne, aquatic, uh, arboreal, arctic, not de not desert, but desert forest, marsh, mountain, plains, and subterranean, although a desert world, or desert world, excuse me, would be awesome. But those, yeah, those are it. Uh, I want to go the, to the desert world, yeah. Right? Alrighty. Can we go now? That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's uh, let's say that desserts feature in this world. Why not? I mean, sure. ideas can come from anywhere. <laughs> and sure. so we have, you know, we have sort of standard physical characteristics here, right? Gravity is standard, mm -hmm. atmosphere is normal. So those mm -hmm. can be interesting levers to tweak. And this is another good thing to point out is as we go through this, you're always free, even when using tools like this, to just say, you know what? I don't want that. I want really high gravity for whatever reason. Or if you get high gravity, you're like, no, I don't want to deal with that. Let's just have normal gravity. Um, and that's totally fine. That's like what you should be doing, whatever is fun for you, uh, whatever helps you tell a story that's interesting to you and your players. So, so that's we've got plenty of biome because it sounds like kind of an Earth-like world. Um, so mm -hmm, we can mm -hmm. pick any biome. Do, do, do my fellow panelists have any preferences on 
maybe a biome or two that this world could that we could zoom in on a little bit to get some ideas. So we got water. mountains. I can give forest. you the list again, quick. We got water. Okay. Yeah, aquatic is good. Uh, Andrew, do you have one? Yes. That, like, I mean, mountains is generally a pretty good one. Mountains. I'm still I'm still right, trying to get my those. mind out of the all of the dessert world ideas that I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> I say I say we run with it. I say we, we okay. keep that in mind as we go and and make it work. Um, All right. Well, so and there's the also other Planet thing Bob in chat, which cracked me up. Someone said <laughs> Planet Bob. Planet Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's your notion there, Andrew? It sounds. Oh, like I was just gonna say I propose a a Mordor like mountain kingdom uh, ruled by some sort of maniac chocolate factory owner who's enslaving all of the local. Oh, uh, nearby no. neighboring kingdoms oh, no. and forcing them to produce delicious treats that are delicious, but but uh, but cause misery to to all sur all in the surrounding environs. Oh no! I'm gonna note that down as evil Wonka, and we can yeah, keep that. Yeah. Evil Wonka. <laughs> trying to skirt the edge of the copyright uh, violation there, but yes, it's totally evil guess, Wonka. Yeah, like, <laughs> He's possibly evil trying Wonka to produce a, an enormous <laughs> dessert to please some sort of ancient elder god which will then descend sure. upon the planet and devour everyone after <laughs> dipping in the chocolate. Perfect. All right. Uh, the other thing that the deck of many worlds has is some adventure hooks. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, even that front of the card that they was just reading from has a, a, a sort of quirk to it that will help you make your worlds different. So do you want to hit us with that one, Leo? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll do the, the general premise first, and then if you want the quirk, just okay. let me know, Joe, and we'll talk a little bit about it. But uh, this Earth-like okay. world hosts a colossal alien megastructure, technological, technological excuse me, construct, mega terraformer, or something stranger still. So there's some sort of large, colossal alien megastructure or, or technological uh, structure here on the planet. I mean, so to me, this sounds like there's a terraformer that's turning things into chocolate right or yeah absolutely it's it's, it's, yes! it's, it's, it's changing it's everything on the world into wide maze of pipes turning the world into a dessert desert yeah. <laughs> it's desertification candy the desertification yeah. desertification of the planet <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. oh there's a there's an ap title in there jenny somewhere it's, it's coming <laughs> to me right now oh, eric's gonna love me <laughs> next week when i pitch this <laughs> All right, so we're already getting pretty Wahoo, which I love. Um, let's yes. keep going and <laughs> get even weirder. Um, so we talked about, so let's let's go from the deck. So the deck would, would give us uh, some ideas about biomes and about cultural attributes, but let's move to the book, uh, Galaxy Exploration Manual, that has a lot of tools for building worlds and use that to explore first uh, the aquatic biome and see what this tells us. So uh, one thing is that both the deck and the book will give you uh, ideas for is species that live uh, on, on worlds based on biomes, based on lots of other things. But if you are interested in species building, then I recommend, well, let's see, does anyone on this panel have any special interest in that they might want to share? <laughs> Any, I'm uh, staring at Jenny, like. <laughs> yeah, no, we're actually going to be back here at the very next panel. We're going to be creating a species um, that will be from this planet, uh, whether that's a playable species that players could actually like, hey, I'm going to make my new character after you kill me with like the the hot the hot fudge lava slide or whatever from the uh, desertification <laughs> machine. Um, or just like creatures you might encounter, encounter like inhabitants of the world. And so we're going to actually be back in the next panel. And uh, the reason you see me looking down a lot is I'm taking notes so that we can best, um, we can bridge from this panel into the next uh, the next episode of silliness. <laughs> so yes, thanks, I Joe. did not realize that we were <laughs> setting you up for uh, what you had to do in the next panel. That changes everything here. You are, so you can make this as horrible as you need to because I'm the only one who's gonna have to deal with it and then it will just be new victims. I mean, staff members here. <laughs> Joe, but before you get there, I have to just share one comment yes. from chat. Uh, Sir, Sir Newt yeah. said there was a typo when programming the AI for the, the yes. structure. <laughs> so, and as an editor, as an editor, um, I had to. It's it wasn't yeah. they they wanted to terraform a desert a desert biome, but they got a dessert biome. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, back love back, it. back to oh, uh, the biome building and, and the aquatic. Okay, biome so, specifically, so there's definitely gingerbread people. We've got that. Yes, right? <laughs> gingerbread people, some sort of. Like, Possibly based avian species. Um, 
what? Possibly, I mean, possibly gingerbread mix. Uh, ooh, uplifted <laughs> gummy bears. We've got to have those. <laughs> uplifted gummy bears. Okay, I'm writing this uh -huh. all down. Uplifted gummy yeah. bears. <laughs> oh, there was that Nutrigel uh, uh, Skittermander gummy uh, that yeah, I made, and I true. just uh, for for Donna Flame, and now I'm going. Oh wow, an uplifted Skittermander gummy is amazing. Yep. That's another great thing. Yeah, you can you can use non like just because the Galaxy Exploration Manual and Deck Many Worlds exist to help you make the worlds. You can use stuff from all over. Everything that we put out in Starfinder can be inspiration. Like you can you can file the serial numbers off of anything that we've put out there and just say, yeah, this is now this thing. Um, I think that's a great. So so let's look <laughs> at. I, I actually so we we knew the first card that we were pulling, but now everything's truly seat of pants we obviously didn't we're know off about the whale the rails off the whales yeah uh, <laughs> off, off the, the whales. Whale. off the sky whales <laughs> yeah. um, so i have rolled on the aquatic adventure hooks table i rolled a d20 and got an 18 so that gives us an adventure hook that for the past month seaweed draped skeletons have marched from the ocean each night to terrorize a coastal town rumors connect the attacks to a necromancer who was exiled from the town years ago so how does that fit in with anything we've been talking about? I have no idea. The sea witch, <laughs> clearly. The sea witch. Because I, I, I have witch. posited that there's a magical mermaid like people that fight the uh, mm. the evil Willy Wonka yeah. <laughs> and his minions. So maybe there's also a sea witch there. I don't know. <laughs> well, sea witches Perfect. are known, to, or all witches are known to live in houses made of candy. So there should be a right. large awesome. hag and or witch contingent on this planet. So, okay, but how do we have like an aquatic candy house? That's the thing. Like, is there an amphibious candy mm. building material that's like unique to this planet? And maybe this is actually their trade, like to the wider galaxy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, maybe, maybe that's why they live. Maybe that's why the resistance lives under the sea because candy dissolves in water. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, that makes yeah. good sense. Yeah. Gingerbread people can't attack them there at all. Exactly. <laughs> It's Chat asked about sea witch or sandwich, and also suggests uh, jelly and desert gummy dessert gummy worms in the desert. Dessert. Oh yeah, right. definitely. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Giant. Uh, that only makes sense. You mentioned, I think, like gingerbread <laughs> kaiju, a little bit up thread too, which oh obviously God. needs to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I wonder goodness. too if the necromancer. <laughs> I wondered too if the necromancer wasn't somehow wronged by this terraforming project, and that that's okay, and that's what's going on yeah. because we know it's yeah. a terraforming. Pro Maybe you know, uh, uh, Starfinder's a world where magic and technology can weave together, right? So maybe the programmer of this terraforming project was harmed or hurt in some sort of severe way, uh, you know, sort of using this, you know, hybrid, hybrid magic and technology and his turn to necromancy now specifically sort of like moved away from technology and sort of, sort of like rebellion against this, this sort of like joke gone wrong, sort of de destroying their planet. You know, I don't know. But. Yeah. Yep. I like it. So uh, I've moved to Mountain Bio. Hopefully, can you all hear me? Rather, even though you yeah no longer have to see me. Okay, great. <laughs> so I and so those you'll just yeah have the to... sea creatures can terrorize. Yes. Oh, sorry. I, uh, I just I had another identity. The sea creatures can oh, terrorize yeah. the resistance that Andrew came up with. So that uh, all that all nice. fits together. Anyway, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. Perfect. No, that's good. Um, so mm -hmm. now uh, I rolled on the mountain adventure hook. Uh, so I went to the mountain biome section of of Galaxy Exploration Manual. And I rolled a nine, which gives us when a disputed will leaves a small patch of fertile mountain range up for grabs, the local government announces that the territory is free to anyone willing to get there first and lay their claim. So there is now some free mountain territory. What, what do? Why? Why is that relevant? <laughs> well, first of all, it's, it's clearly a big rock candy mountain territory. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, um, and uh, yes. So it's a disputed claim <laughs> over a will. It said, "Yeah, mm -hmm. a disputed will. Maybe, and maybe it's the government. only. Yeah. Did we establish any only... like local governments or political powers Not... beyond the uh, the Wonka? Not yet, and we totally can. We yeah. will get to um, uh, cultural attributes next, which will include like accord and kind of how things, how people get along around here. But we can, of course, always uh, decide things as we go. So it does sound like there is 
there is something, there's at least some, uh, some people in power besides this uh, desertification monstro, <laughs> uh, megacorp or, or evil individual. Um, we can think on that. So next, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, got, if you train, if, yeah. Uh, well, my, my thought was if you change an entire mountain formation into rock candy, for example, mm -hmm. you would have a lot of displaced creatures uh, and sort of like mm -hmm. ecological terror going on, which might attract mm. Xena Wardens in Starfinder. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. Um, so part of me thought, oh, okay, maybe like the contest of wills sort of going on is <laughs> like Xena Wardens are trying to like maybe create some sort of like starship arc or something to like get endangered species off the planet. I don't know. Hmm. That's I cool. Like that. Yeah, I could definitely see them being against turning all <laughs> living things into into candy <laughs> desserts. That makes I sense could also to me. see a, I could also see a huge incursion of formians. If you uh, if you leave mm. enough sugar out anywhere, you're gonna get ants. So <laughs> oh no! Get, uh, <laughs> oh, Andrew. <laughs> well, maybe they're I mean, the ones going to the big form, rock candy but mountains. Formians seem like the obvious choice there. <laughs> so some sort of Formian queen is trying to establish a foothold on this planet, which is covered with sugar. I buy this. I think this is canon now for this world. Absolutely. Um, I love it. So let's let's move to some cultural attributes and see what's going on uh, culturally on this weird planet of ours. Uh, first, so <laughs> the first one that we'll, we'll tackle is Accord, which is a kind of catch-all for how, how do people get along here? Like, do, do they or do they not? Um, and first, we'll roll a d6 to see if it's high, low, or medium accord. We got a three, so that's going to be medium accord. And then I'll roll an adventure hook uh, on that table, and I get uh, a seemingly unbreakable code gives one nation an advantage in ma matters of espionage. Ooh. Hmm. So there's definitely somebody spying on, there's people trying to break in to get this desertification technology, right? Mm -hmm. Or to stop like, it. Obviously, it's very powerful. Or to stop it. Or to stop it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean that that tracks. Or to snack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they're just hungry. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're, they're just trying to sneak into the. <laughs> okay. This gives a whole All new I meaning to me. The... Like eat the rich, by the way. Like the idea of like a <laughs> King Wonka's like battle headquarters definitely has a gooey center. I don't know what that actually <laughs> means in this context. <laughs> But it needs to have one. So I, I know, the accord I, I know we're talking about just oh, there's, there's some kind of code or some kind of generally accepted social rule that makes espionage easier. Did I understand that I right? Think it, I mean, we can interpret it however we want. Uh, my understanding was that it's a uh like a cipher that that no one else can crack and so they'll be able to communicate with their spies without anyone intercepting and being able to decode their message messages but we could also go with whatever we want <laughs> okay which is the curse the blessing and curse of doing this this way <laughs> well if we do want to make um, it a I mean, uh, or spoken social rule that makes it easier to spy we could say that there is a long-held custom that if you come to somebody's door in costume they have to give you candy and that <laughs> includes like government buildings and stuff so since everything is made of candy you knock on the door you're wearing a costume and they have to hand you like the the top secret technology they're working on because it's made of candy <laughs> all right <laughs> yes uh, and you're yes, wrong and. this is not a good idea i'm just it's <laughs> good um, let's see. Alignment is would be the next uh, cultural attribute we could look at. And you know, alignment's uh, a take it or leave it kind of system of things. Uh, we'll we'll just roll it here and see what we get. Um, so I'm gonna roll a d6 to see if it's chaotic, neutral, or lawful, and I get chaotic, and then I'll roll it to see if it's uh, evil, neutral, or good, and I get neutral. So we've got chaotic neutral. Um, which again is not going to apply to every single entity on the planet and everything everywhere, but it can give us a sort of idea of what, and certainly uh, it, that seems to fit, right? We don't have to do too yeah. much work here. To, yeah. Uh, but we, we can look at the Galaxy Express Manual and see that for chaotic neutral, 
There's some associated creatures like uh, Color Out of Space or Hespers or Valkyries. And there's some deities too that might be relevant like Besmara, uh, Oras, uh, Calistria. And the plane, associated plane is the Maelstrom. I don't know if there's like a portal to the Maelstrom somewhere. Um, and then there's the Galaxy of Man has some, some just uh, guidance on what chaotic neutral societies might look like, um, which is, you know, maybe they might value adaptability, creativity, and spontaneity, or uh, any number of things. So, uh, yeah, that, that seems to track just on its own for me. But yeah, I feel thoughts? like with this, like, goblin candy culture that we have on this planet like that absolutely <laughs> tracks i think it works <laughs> no notes <Awesome. laughs> there was a there was a great suggestion for the and not to go back because we'll, we can go right back but oh yeah we the, can go back um the yeah the the accord one there was a great suggestion that was uh, skittermander saboteurs or spies trying to feed uh, the displaced or or uh houseless of the galaxy sort of thing oh nice which would explain some of that, I like uh, that eyes roaming around yeah so anyway i just thought that was a cool idea yeah. mm -hmm. i like that too for sure all right let's uh let's check out magic that's the next oh did you have something oh no go ahead okay so i've rolled a d6 and got high magic so this is going to be a high magic oh roll, hell yeah uh I let's roll with all an the adventure living candy and stuff yes <laughs> uh we got an 18 on the adventure so there's 20 adventure hooks for each of High, low, and medium magic uh, in Galaxy of Fish Manual. So, plenty of seeds. We got a grieving mystic uses enchanted bombs to ignite magical currents and turn back time, releasing unintended effects. <laughs> Clearly, those are all jawbreakers, the bombs. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> what are they grieving and why are they? Why are they turning? They're trying to turn back time. Is it a sort of Doctor Strangey thing where they're trying to fix something that went wrong? Maybe get, fix that typo. This is somebody, this is a. A type of man oh, yeah. really wanted yes. to that might do an editor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, an editor. <laughs> an editor is the savior. Of the world. <laughs> I mean, an editor is the savior of my world. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So somebody's trying to turn back time so they can go in there and remove that extra S from the uh, yes. from the terraforming instructions. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and there, and when you mess with time, the... <laughs> yeah. I, I there was also a great, editor... a great suggestion. Oh, pardon. I'm sorry. No, nope, please just finish what you were saying. You're from, good. From chat, yeah. Uh, uh, gumball, gumball shooter, uh, like candy weapons, gumball shooter, and I immediately went, oh, what if they tried to make like a turbo laser or like giant planet, like planetary weapon out of candy? So there was just just like this giant gumball shooter, but it instead blew a, a gumball like bubble all over the planet. And now everyone is covered, like, you know, everyone got the entangled condition like that kind of thing. Oh. Uh, anyway. Orbital jelly laser. I used to play bass for them. <laughs> uh, so no, we I, I covered, want... oh yeah, go ahead, Kenny. I was just going to say, I want this editor that's like the world savior to be this like time traveling, like editor wizard, kind of kind of a la like the doctor <laughs> who's just like kind of going about their adventures. But like their true aim is to remove this extra S and uh, and save the planet. <laughs> yes. Anyway, continue. I don't I don't know why they're a dramata be... in my head, but they're a dramata in my head. <laughs> yeah. Be a dramata. yeah. The species from the Alien Archive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I... I kind of want this now to be like a demigod that travels around fixing various disasters that were all caused by tiny typos in various mm -hmm. realities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, I mean, maybe this is who's enlisted the PCs for help, right? Like this is what yeah. brings you to this world is like, like you have to come. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why else you would go here <laughs> other than right. You just found yeah. it other than the candy. You um, know? Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> Sweet tooth, <laughs> notwithstanding. Um, all right, so we've covered in some ways uh, the physical characters. So we got accord, alignment, and magic. So let's look at religion and technology to kind of round out uh, the main cultural attributes. So religion, I'm going to roll, and we get a medium religion world. So it's somewhat influential, but it's not like you know dominated by worship of a specific deity or anything like that. Um, but we get 13, which is 
A group of pious adherents need to raise credits to save an orphanage, though an imposing deity's in <gasps> interference makes their task more difficult. Uh, okay. Well, first off, I mean, <laughs> if, if you end up in the orphanage on the candy planet, it's a mixed blessing, I guess. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hmm. So what... I mean, I like the idea that... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I mean, I, I'm, I'm focusing more on these sort of pious adherents um, being opposed by a deity. Like, what what are they trying to do? I kind of like the idea of taking that and leaving the orphanage part and saying, like, what, what, what deity would be interested in this planet and who would be, yeah, what, what's going on there? I'm not sure. Chat says well, God of Dentistry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. There you go. <laughs> we don't have one, but uh maybe we need one. <laughs> yeah, right? We always I talk about like Abadar has... to go to the tooth Abad <laughs> Abadar's here, I feel like strongly. Like I, mm, I yeah, yeah, you know seems... we're... there's money to be made here, right? Like there's a attractions yeah. like this planet. There's so Ab Abadar seems fitting to me so maybe there's a group that wants to for religious reasons maybe they worship a god of like giving and and generosity they want to just give give this technology and this candy away to the galaxy they want to just give it all for because it's you know practically yeah. free uh and abadar is is kind of being like ah <laughs> but profit uh, be charging <laughs> for this let's yeah yeah, and I feel like within okay. that, there's uh, we talked about Basmara being a thing since it's like a chaotic neutral mm. kind of like culture overall. So mm -hmm. I could see like the space piracy and just piracy aspect with it having like the like the beaches that we've talked about um, and like aquatic biomes as well where people might live. So those those Besmarans could be a mixture of hey, we do want to do this for a good reason. Like we want to give these these candies and technology to the the poor people of the galaxy who need it, but some of them might also just want to steal it for fun because you know space pirate so yeah, <laughs> I think yeah we could have that totally. going on too mm -hmm. well, yeah. let's round this let's round this out with technology see how much technology is featuring in this world obviously it could be purely magical at this point but uh let me roll and see we get low technology that tracks <laughs> um okay let's roll a hook for that so there's a war between two analog weapon wielding nations uh, that escalates when an unknown arms dealer gives one side laser weaponry. Oh. Okay. <laughs> gummy tech. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's definitely, that's definitely. A gummy oh, tech. wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. So good. I think, uh, okay. I, think I just see a can... huge gummy mech like stomping through, you know, over, over a mountain. <laughs> Can they have gotten the giant gummy mech out of a pinata to to go up and, and take somebody else's idea upstream? Like but I, I know it's low tech. Right? Pinata like, in the mountains broke it open, and inside was all this ancient technology that they're now using to <laughs> to dominate their neighbors. Very Horizon Zero Dawn. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of like the pinatas being like drop pods that like crack open yes. them to the sky and then drop the mechs onto the battlefield. <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> we've, we've strayed from low tech, I think. But you know, I but that's, yeah. that's the beauty of this, right? Is if we want to modify right. it a little I mean, bit, we can. And it can be magic tech. It's tech, you know. We've got yeah. magic. We've got lots of magic. It's fine. Those are indistinguishable. We're good. As long as it's still made out of cardboard, it's low tech. So I mean, you can only you can only high tech a paper, yeah. out of so much. <laughs> All right, well, that's, I mean, you know, other, other than like finishing touches, obviously we didn't talk too much about species, although we did cover some species that we might want to see there. Uh, that's something we can get into in the next panel a bit more. Um, there's also, you know, depending on if you wanted more adventure hooks, some reason for PCs to be there. Deck of Many Worlds has plenty. Obviously, we just rolled up a bunch. Um, there's NPCs. You might want to have somebody have serve as a point of contact. It, maybe it's the, uh, the time traveling uh, editor, <laughs> wizard, um, <laughs> or, you know, some other context. Uh, you can also, uh, we, we have some, we have some interesting tables in the galaxy expression manual that can help you come up with NPCs 
uh, on the fly too. So that's something you can do. Uh, same, same with settlements. Um, there's a settlement toolbox in Galaxy Illustration Manual that can help you figure out, you know, a city for them to sort of land at because the world is a very big place. So um, the, the trope is always that, you know, you know exactly where you're going on an entire planet somehow. And there's no reason to stray from that too much, I don't think. Uh, because it's, it's about having fun and getting into the adventure as soon as you can. And yeah, uh, any any other things you want to add? I really like, Leo, you mentioning the star find, the star Skittermander gummy bear being factoring in here mm -hmm. somehow. <laughs> like, Yeah, that Nutrigel Skittermander. I, I was just like, there's so many ways to use that. <laughs> that had people, someone um, someone actually like 3D, 3D printed a mold, told me at one of the Paizo cons that I went Whoa. to so that they could actually cast one. Um, wow. But this is like a five pound. The one I wrote was like a five pound. <laughs> anyway, I, I did want to give the 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 quirk uh, of the world now. If, oh, yeah. if you're okay with yeah. it, Joe, because I do I it. do think now that we've got this world flushed out, there's a little bit of a dun 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 moment here. Uh, so this this world, you know, this this wonderful terraformed candy utopia or candy planet we've talked about with with all these things going on, is an apparent utopia. Makes sense. Checks out. But in fact, mm -hmm. a facade meant to lure sapient creatures to their destruction. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that really well. Yeah, that yeah. does fit. Yeah. Um, I guess our work here is done on that one. <laughs> we don't have, to, yeah. <laughs> don't have to justify that one too much. That's awesome. Did we talk about the chocolate vampire? There's definitely one of those somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be, yeah. I feel like all the candy so is... is some form of sentient and it has varying levels of like sentience and sapience because depending on how like complex its structure is but that's kind of the messed up the really messed up thread we can have through this is like yeah you want to come here and get candy but like the candy's all alive but it might fight back right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> i i look forward to this next panel of jenny and seeing yeah. what you oh my do. god <laughs> 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 the beauty, I mean, it, you, you're still pretty free in that, right? You could, it could be a species before <laughs> the candification. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking cool. we, we're, we've, we've built our world a little faster than maybe we anticipated, which is fine. Uh, we got a little time. I was thinking we maybe open it up for questions, Joe, if you wanted. Uh, yeah. Uh, and as we do that, if we, we could also just pull some other cards from the deck and do some really fast, like, yeah, let's uh, world building too. Let's whip up. Let's whip up a world uh, with the deck by just drawing kind of three cards. Yeah, so we'll we'll draw one card for the front. If if you're on the fly yep. with me here, Leo, yep. sorry to put you on the spot. Yep. <laughs> no, it's so okay. One for the front. I'm with you. I've got a I've yeah. got a card for the front. Okay, so what kind of world is it? What what kind of biomes? Gravity? What what's that? Yeah, yeah. So like? this. Quick, quick world is a terrestrial world. Its gravity is standard. Its atmosphere is thin. Its biomes are airborne, aquatic, arboreal, arctic, desert, forest, marsh, mountain, plains, and subterranean. Uh, and the description is it's a glowing expanse fills an entire continent on this earth-like world, a gate to a fiery plane, a contained apocalypse or something stranger. So there's a glowing expanse on this con this continent that could be a gateway to a plane or something else going on that has some sort of maybe elemental or magical connection. Interesting. And then if you want to grab two other cards at random and look at the backs for their ed sort of adventure hooky quirk things... Mm -hmm. and see if we can mash those together with that other quirk and see what we come up with. Sure, sure. So just keeping in mind that we've got this glowing expanse uh, that fills the <laughs> continent. It is also strewn with large permanent zones in which magic, technology, or neither functions. So that's a, there are these zones of, of where magic, technology, or neither uh, work. And then there's, it's also noted for settling matters of great societal import in epic gladiatorial, <laughs> I'm sorry, this one's cracking me up. Noted for settling <laughs> matters of great societal import in epic gladiator gladiatorial camp combat. Wow, I can't say those words, I'm sorry. High stakes competition <laughs> or sport. So there's this, this is wonderful gl uh, gladiatorial competition going on um, or some sort of uh, sport uh, that is used for settling matters of, of society societal importance oh my goodness okay, so y'all what comes to mind from those three things too. oh yeah 
sorry. <laughs> nice. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> but what comes to no. mind for me is that maybe that continent is a, so I just rolled for magic and tech to see which was high and low. So this is a medium, mm -hmm. potentially a medium magic, low tech world. So let's say uh, this is uh, people who are generally skilled in spell casting um, or at least familiar with it. And this, this zone, this giant glowing zone is a place where magic doesn't work. And that is where the gladiatorial combats are held uh, to decide oh, wow. the matters of important. You can't use magic there. Um, so you, so it's subverting sort of everyone's normal day to day. Uh, that's just what comes to mind from those three things, trying to match those three things together in some kind of way. Does anyone else I have? Love it. Can you see the visual of that? Like there's a there's this cool combat going on and in the background you can see the sort of like hole in the sky where the like the the shroud of fire has parted but then the yeah. rest of the shroud of fire just like blurs out the uh you know the the sky box so to speak of of the and I like I don't know sorry <laughs> that just gave me a really cool cinematic visual uh this is a JJ Abrams film clearly um <laughs> was there a lens flare in there I didn't <laughs> I saw one. I definitely saw a lens flare. <laughs> you saw a lens flare? Okay. Yeah. I like the idea, but I'm not completely disappointed with the execution yet. So I don't know if we're going to. <laughs> Let's do one more quick one like that, maybe, and see. Yeah. Sure. Unless there's. Uh, yeah. Right. I can't see chat right now, so unfortunately. So. I will uh, say no the worries, one thing can, that grabbed or... me from that last one was I really like the idea of a contained apocalypse. Like mm, yeah. something with a scene reaction started that was going to destroy the world. And then they froze it in a dome and <laughs> turned it into a gladiatorial arena. That's pretty oh, cool. That's cool yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really neat idea. Hmm. Yeah. It's like a whole different direction you could go with those same prompts, which is really kind of the, the fun of doing this, I think. Yeah. Okay. So we've got for this new world, I've got a front and two backs. We have a terrestrial world. It's, Gravity is standard. Uh, its atmosphere is normal. Its biomes are airborne, aquatic, arboreal, arctic, desert, forest, marsh, mountain, plains, and subterranean. Uh, and this, the description uh, is numerous large vortexes whirl in the oceans of this Earth-like world. So the, the art for this is fantastic because there's just a huge vortex in the middle of the ocean on this one. Uh, and then that combines with it is inhabited by sapients that transfer their consciousnesses into artificial bodies for fear of disease or early or accidental death. Wow. Okay, uh, yeah. And then it's littered, <laughs> littered with the accumulated fossils, refuse, or ruins of countless civilizations, each preserved in distinct layers. Interesting. Are those, are those layers in the... Go, go for it. I was just saying, did we say that it was like an, a mostly ocean covered planet or did I just picture it that way for some reason? Uh, there you, are a lot. Like it that it way is... and... Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. No, we should run with that, though, uh, because like I think the art yeah. is, is Earth like with lots of ocean, but we could just say this is an ocean world. Like that's the beauty is you can. And there are ocean worlds in the in the deck of many worlds, for instance, but we can just go with whatever grabs us, I think. I was gonna say, I like the idea of maybe those, these massive vortexes, you can see the layers of civilizations that they've wiped out in, in the vortex, like in the walls of, Ooh, the, yeah. of the giant spinning uh, whirlpool. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like maybe, maybe the oceans rise periodically and take everything from land and then bring it back down into the ocean. This makes no sense, but look. We can just say it's a high yeah, magic. Right. Yeah, as long as it's high <laughs> and, magic. And, well, and, and chat's not yeah. having it. We're going to build some other worlds because we want to, but they just keep going back to candy. Like, they do. Chad's oh, yeah. like, sail on the Pop <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. And Chad's, Chad's just like, yeah, we get it. You can build worlds, but we, we know what we want. We never move past the gummy tech and the big rock candy <laughs> mountains, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, that's so fine. What, I'm, what I'm hearing is that candy world needs to be like a template that can be applied to any world. Um, just to yeah. transform anything else into a candy themed version of itself. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll remind people that we have Starfinder infinite now, so there's uh, infinite possibilities for <laughs> exploring adventures on this world. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a comment that said the ocean is layered with different types of oceans that do not mix like oil and water and or separated by magic. Mm. I really like that idea of sort of being uh, 
Ooh, uh, yeah. mostly liquid, right? To your point, uh, Andrew, but it's that, you know, maybe there's, there's different types of like life giving liquids that aren't water uh, yeah. that are mixing in a strange way and creating almost like different aquatic biomes to, you know what I mean? You could roll a yeah. couple different types That's... of aquatic biomes based on the types of liquids yeah. too. That's a really cool idea. Like a liquid, just liquid layers all over the planet. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And then we could do this I mean, forever, again, but we there's, can't. <laughs> <laughs> there's all these fossils too. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Is, yeah. That's yeah. That's the civilization. I think you were talking about a little too, because there's ruins or the civilizations. I like that idea of them swirling in the vortex. And then I'm trying to think about why the the other hook, the inhabited by sapiens that transfer their consciousnesses into artificial bodies. Like maybe maybe there's somewhere there's a database that's still preserved that like downloaded everyone's consciousnesses and is sort of like repopulating and from those ruined civilizations and is repopulating mm. them maybe into artificial intelligences or or androids i don't know androids definitely that's androids. Cool. yes yeah or maybe they're just water <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was oh, gonna say maybe oh just the you'd have the first, the first uh species to get wiped out so Mm. After uh, after the first thing turned into a layer of liquid, they just decided to start backing themselves up. <laughs> you you could have Bye. fleets of android pirates sailing the seas of this vortex <laughs> ocean world. Uh, love it, which I just love. Cool. Well, we we just I think, think we only intended shanties. to build one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'd be glorious. <laughs> All the all the auto tune that would be happening. Yes. <laughs> so Jenny has plenty of material to work with. That's what. That's oh, what yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> In the next panel. Um, awesome. Are there? I'm looking around. I didn't see any questions. I may have missed. Uh, is there anything else that any of the panelists? Let me see. Let me just make sure. Um, they want to talk about? world building or are there any questions you know um those who are out there in attendance if you this is your chance to ask some folks who do design worlds for starfinder if you have any questions about world building or things you want to use uh for your own campaign uh, uh etc um just i guess to sort of like wrap things up are there any other notes that you all kind of want to add out there obviously we built three pretty plausible worlds. I think if we sat down as GMs or writers and tried to flesh these out, we could do, you know, yeah, there's some, there's some definitely out there stuff here. Uh, but there's also some stuff that I think you, you know, you could really flesh out and connect uh, to the Starfinder setting to a setting of your own creation, etc. And do something really cool that when somebody, you know, says, hey, we just want to hop uh, out to the vast, or maybe they're using the, uh, the system in fly free or die to, you know, run goods all over all over the vast and they're like hey we just want to make a run and you need a planet quick we definitely found ways to generate that and, and find interesting and compelling hooks to lead folks on adventures uh are there any other things that people just want to add notes out there that you think gms and and uh, folks who build words worlds should think about yeah i would say we we talked about tools today and we use some tools uh use them as much as they help you and ignore everything that you don't like and we created a candy planet, maybe you want something more grimdark or something. Maybe you want something more like, you know, straight up Earth-like with one tiny twist. Those are all possible, uh, again, with these tools or, or without them or, you know, mixing and matching as you please. The point is to, to be creative. And, and again, like we did this as a panel, I think it's always more fun when you have more ideas, more people throwing ideas into the mix. So I would encourage collaboration too. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Had a, like had a great Go ahead, Jenny. Yeah. I had I a great say, question too yeah. I want to get to, but. Mm -hmm. uh, just real quick before you get to that question, just don't be afraid to bring your players into the world building as well. Like I know there's times that you don't want players to have spoilers. Like you want to present them with this sandbox that they're getting to explore and they're discovering lore and everything. I, I get that, but sometimes it's really fun to have your players go to this new planet. And you know, if they're in a civilization, like wandering around looking for food and let them help you come up with like what kind of cuisine it is and what they have to go through to, to find a restaurant, you know, like it's stuff like that can make really good memories at the table so don't be afraid to share that with your players especially if you as the gm are stressed because you have a lot of prep just like i don't know ask them questions like let them come up with random ideas and then come up with ways to make it work like we did it was fun right 
I, I just really wanted to ask this panel this question. Uh, so I get really excited when it came over. What would be your recommendations for linking world building to the drift crisis? And Jenny and Joe, and of course, Andrew, I really wanted your thoughts on that because I think that's that's a really intriguing question, especially with the drift crisis event and, and book uh, happening. We, you can see the drift crisis is affecting us here. Uh, our streaming technology, there's been a little bit of a drift crash of our own localized. Um, but <laughs> the the part of part of the drift crisis is this uh, inciting event of the drift crash where people are you know traveling through the drift uh, faster than light hyperspace plane uh sorry if that was a lot of redundant words and they're getting ejected into random places um and so that's a perfect opportunity to whip out uh some random world and say like this makes no sense but here you are uh nonetheless uh i think that's a, a totally reasonable use <laughs> awesome uh, I would just take adv full advantage of the fact that the drift is ripped open and vomiting bits of other planes all over the place to mm. go with stuff that you wouldn't otherwise normally be able to justify at all. <laughs> so, I mean, not that you really have to with anything. I think that was pretty much the whole entire theme of this of this panel was no no idea is too ridiculous if you decide that you're going to commit to it. But definitely. Um, the drift crisis is an opportunity to to throw stuff at the wall that normally you wouldn't be able to get away with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, I think with that, you know, we're, we're wrapping up. Let me see if there's any other quick questions we could take. I love, I love Joe's uh, grimdark suggestion because I would make this planet like half terraformed. Uh, so that I could sort of have the weird juxtaposition. Again, I like to lean into discomfort and I'd love to have half of the planet be candy and the rest of the planet trying to figure out what's going on <laughs> on the other side of the planet uh, because yeah. that juxtaposition would be fun. Are there any other, uh, uh, you know, sort of last bits or notes that the folks want to interject? We're so happy and, and thankful uh, that you attended uh, Building Worlds and Starfinder uh, with us. Um, uh, the next panel uh, will be uh, concepting aliens for your game. Obviously, uh, Jenny is going to take uh, some notes from this, uh, and we'll, we'll build an alien. So now, now we've uh, <laughs> we, we've created some worlds. We're going to build some aliens. So good luck, Jenny. We we gave thank you. you. <laughs> So, we're, so we're all looking forward to seeing there. what you do with this giant pile of fireworks we left on your front step. <laughs> right. That's fine. Right. All right. Well, thanks again to everyone out there, uh, everyone who's attended PaizoCon here uh, in Seattle or attending online uh, for your homes. We appreciate you. Thank you to all the fans who love Starfinder and Pathfinder. We've really enjoyed our time, uh, and I hope you have a wonderful convention and a wonderful weekend. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye. Bye. Thank